Okay, the light's flashing. It looks like we're live. All right. Okay, hi. Uh, welcome back. I'm Verio Busto. This is Friday, uh, the 28th of August, uh, 28 8 2020. Uh, 2020, the year we all see clearly, uh, whether you wear glasses or not. Um, all right, so I'm picking up this lesson where I kind of had left off before so I can move into the next part, which uh, comes after that. <laughs> um, the part B of, of this. So this, using the data from Tomsk, Tomsk University, um, I'm, uh, excuse me, using the data from Tomsk, I'm, I'm using this as an educational uh, lesson to explain what the frequencies are a little bit better and the quality a little bit better and the amplitude a little bit better. Um, and so, uh, um, and so, um, so Maestro, oh, ah, yay. I like when that doesn't happen. All right. All right. Just to get things out of the way and to organize the desktop. All right. So, all right. So, I love you when you don't do that. All right. So, this is our working model. And if I'd have actually thought I was going to uh, do this, I probably would have taken a screen capture of this. Um, but you can see what our amplitude is on the chart relative to the, our, our, our teaching diagram of the standing waves. Okay, these are the modes. Okay. So going back where we were, just the last video, this is T1 is amplitude 1, T2 in the blue is A2 in the yellow, T3 in the red is A3 in the red, which matches up in color, and T4 in the green is A4 in the green. All right? So you can see, and actually what I am going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot and have this as my uh, teaching um, and this will be um, hold on Okay, we're back. I just want to save that. All right, so you can see here our, uh, the scale that this is on, how even though the waves themselves are, they look like they're the same, they're not the same height. The amplitude is measured on the height and the the um, the magnetics are measured on the horizontal. The uh, so the magnetics are magnetics of the quality. The Q factors. These are again quality. These are the magnetics. All right. All right. So. Um, so, I, that finishes up where we're at last time. The Tomsk site, also, what do they have for weather? All right. Temper, temperature, pressure, humidity. Right. Okay. Temperature, pressure, humidity. I'm not sure what that's... Where the data is there? All right. Electromagnetic, you saw that. Ionospheric data. All right. Let's see what the ionos ionospheric data is doing. Nothing. Nothing it's doing. All right. Last ionogram. There we go. Dependence of the amplitude of the sounded sig 
Come on, man. <laughs> All right. You're only going to F with me. All right. Dependence of the amplitude of the sounded signal on the frequency and the effect of height. The amplitude intensity uh, gradations are shown on the right of the graph. The time on the ionogram corresponds to Tomsk, uh, which is UTC plus 7. All right. All right, so KM would be kilometer. There we go. That's size. Kilometer, KM. That's the height. Right. That's the frequency down here. Pretty sure. Yeah, so the frequency and the height. All right, so that's what that, that's telling you. Well, the, those are amplitude, the dependence of the amplitude of the sounded signal, right? right. Okay, critical frequencies. What are they telling us here? All right. Oh, that's interesting. Critical frequencies, dependencies of critical frequencies of the ionosphere on local time. All right, so what are they telling us here? Kilo. All right, so that's a frequency right here. This frequency is their time and their local time. Okay, that's midnight right there. Dips around midnight. So these right here, this is our scale here. I'm not sure what those all. I don't know much about this chart, to tell you the truth. Killer. This is the the frequencies. This would be mega. This and this is of the ionosphere. All right. So that's not the Schumann resonances here of the planet. Okay. This is measuring the ionosphere. It's a higher kind of dealio. You know, two hundred thousand volts. Right. So we're talking about kilo, seven thousand kilo. You know. Kilo, that's a high frequency, a high, you know, potential up there. So that's what that is. And so these are the different um, bandwidth. So I'm not even really sure what those are. All right. But, um, all right, so this is what, this is from Tomsk. This is the same site as the, um, the Schumann spectrograph that everyone calls the Schumann, the Schumann, quote-unquote. All right, the critical frequencies. All right, so that's what that is. Operating height. Okay, what have we got here? Oh, fine. I have no idea what I'm looking at here either. All right. Kilometers. All right, height. All right, height. Kilometers. All right. So this is 600 kilometer kilometers height kilometers. Okay. These are dependencies of the effective heights of the ionosphere. So the height of the ionosphere at 10, right? It's 10 o'clock in the morning, 8 to 10, right? The ionosphere, height of the ionosphere spiked. You see, significantly spiked and broke apart. That's not, probably not, a, well, I don't know what kind of data malfunction or whatever because there's something here uh, these ones were online. These two were online here. And this, this one, this one. Modes. These are modes. Different modes of measuring the height of the ionosphere. Okay. All right. Identic field components. Do I look at that? No. Uh, what am I looking at? Nothing. So 
can show you. I mean, there's not nothing there. I don't know what I measure. I don't know what I'm looking at. I can't read Russian. Alright, so, uh, oh, wrong one. Critical frequencies without sporadic layers. Alright, so, this is uh, critical frequencies without sporadic layers. Dependencies of critical frequencies of the ionosphere on local time. Local time is expressed in Tomsk, blah, 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 blah UTC plus 7. All right. So these are the kilo, it's resonant frequency in ki kilo, the kilo scale. And this is 6,500 kilos, you know, so that's you know, like mega, that's a million. A thousand times, you know, six, actually giga, I think that would be giga. I'm not good with the, all the numbers, but you get what I'm saying. That's a thousand times 6,000. You know, it's like a million, over a million. Um, so, uh, so you have the time down here, and you have the different scales, different modes over here. So you see the the frequencies, this the the but the ionosphere. This is the ionosphere. This is not the fruit Schumann resonances. This is not the lower atmosphere. This is not what we're at. But this is up there in the top. You know, there's something going on to to be getting way up there, speaky peaking, pike spiking up up like that. All right. All right. So. All right. Oh, and the World Database. That's another one. I have no idea what I'm looking at with the World Database. All right. But it's fun to look at. Right. So you see... All right. This is kind of an interesting chart to look at. It says World Database. Source data provided by the National Geophysical Data Center, uh, NGDC, on a nine-point scale, an estimate of the FOF2 parameter of the world base is given in terms of, in terms of the volume and homogeneity of data and a number of experimental values for each group ionospheric station. Based on the degree of filling the database, the total number of stations, 224 pieces, is nine groups with a radius proportional to the degree of filling. In the first group, there are eight stations. In the second, 10 stations. In the third, 11. In the fourth, 12. In the fifth, 14. In the sixth, 18. In the seventh, 22. In the eighth, 34. And in the ninth group, 95 stations. Whoa, holy crap. All right, so you see, that's what these colors there are, okay? That's one is black, two is the gray, and it's showing you right here, whatever they have here. Uh, the first group is eight, so that's the first group, that's the second, that's the third, the blah, blah, blah. All right, so you see the nine, how big that these areas are covering, eight. In the eighth group, there's 34 stations. So... That's the world, the world database. Okay. So I'm not sure of this, how much of this gets transmitted to Tomsk University. Um, this is simply a database, right? Doesn't say that we get all information from the, all these, uh, these folks, these kind, wonderful folks doing this, right? I mean, this is South America, you know, all this. That's way in that island over there, you know what I'm saying? Arecibo. If I'm not mistaken, this this would be like Arecibo, I think. This. Oh, man. All right. Okay. All right, see? That's why I check that out occasionally, because it does that. It likes to kind of fog up on me sometimes. All right, so... Um, all right, I did the, oh, come on, man, that's the problem with, the, with doing that, um, with the translate, is it want, wants a better translation, insecure, no, I don't want a better translation, it's a fine, I'm happy with this, I'm gonna go away, have, have lunch or something, all right.
So that's, um, with musical interlude, that's a um, kind of a quick go-through of uh, news from, this is uh, spaceweatherlive.com. Um, I'm not going to read all of the news, but they're, they're updating you on the coronal, uh, there's a coronal that's, hole that's facing the Earth, and when we have a coronal hole, we get blasted with uh, solar winds, and so um, I gotta say, if there's any of you who <clears throat> okay, so if there's any of you who follow uh, Lady Lady V, um, Queen V, Lady V, uh, you'll know what she was talking about. I'm sure, I think there's maybe one or two of you who follow her. I don't know who who all is familiar with higher realm holistics, but she is a light worker. She's, a, she calls herself a light Sherpa. I feel she and I do some of the same, similar kind of things, like in, in explaining, being a way shower and light bearer and, and whatever. So um, for those of you who are familiar, with her channel, she was talking about this last uh, CME, and then solar wind, right? This is coming in. And then there's another CME that is going to be probably grazing us, or maybe not grazing us. Uh, but we're talking about, you know, the final... It's the final countdown! This is sort of it. This is where where we are in. It, it in... Uh, no uncertain terms uh, should people be understanding that this is like the same old, same old. No, this is the separating of the wheat from the chaff. Uh, believe me, and that's why I'm online now, and I've waited for as long as I could uh, to avoid being a moving target, basically. But it's it's time to come online and talk about this stuff because things are changing, and and. We, those of us are showing you what is happening on the measurable scope of what you can see uh, on the graphs. And you have the, the data now, the empirical data to see the, 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 the blast of solar, the CMA and solar stuff, the plasma, the, the, the ejections of plasma that's coming to us that is therefore then affecting us with the crazy weather and all that other stuff that's happening um, because it's an actual thing that's that's hit us. The waves of the CMA, it's those are huge, and the shock bow. It's like yeah, it's a glancing blow, but believe me, there is stuff in that. All right, so let me get my pointer. Okay, drop my point. All right, so, all right, so, this is uh, spaceweatherlive.com. So we're talking about that that coronal hole facing the Earth. Okay, the date on this is twenty sixth of August, twenty twenty, at eleven forty seven UTC, 
and then it says a coronal hull is facing our planet today. While this coronal hull is poorly defined in the sense that there is not one large opening, we do see several openings. Dark areas, right? These guys here are dark areas. These are coronal holes. All right. Which combined cover a significant portion of the sun's northern hemisphere. We even see an opening near the equator that has already passed the central meridian. So it passed now, but those rays were coming at us. And so we're kind of off the, not quite a, on the meridian, we're below the meridian. So that would be kind of, if I'm understanding how, you know, our position on this, that would be facing, you know, facing us. That's, that is literally facing us. Um, so that CME uh, is getting a push behind it of all these uh, these guys here, of the the little goony goony birds that are in the middle of the sun, that are coming to get us. I, mean, I don't know how to put it better. Okay, so C two solar flare, uh, SC twenty five slowly ramping up. Okay, sun cycle, sun cycle twenty five. This was written on the uh, the fifteenth of August, not that long ago. Uh, Got a free my mouse. All right, Saturday, the 15th of August. Okay. A C 2.0 solar flare took place this morning at 6.07 UTC from a plague region, a region without sunspots, near the west limb. A small coronal mass ejection was ejected into space, but is not aimed towards Earth. This event was kind of a wake-up call as there has been little space weather activity we're talking about in the past few weeks. I'm not sure if that's correct, and I agree with that, necessarily. I think the sun has been popping off some stuff to us within the last, oh, oh two, two weeks, maybe. A week, anyway. No, that's me, dropping my pointer again. All right, so have we passed solar minimum? Yeah, I will tell you. Yeah, I'm not the expert here, but yeah, we have. I'm not reading that. All right, so I already know how that ends. All right, so uh, this is a world database. Um, all right, so I wanted to... Uh, hold on. Let me... Um, Get some music while I try and find what I'm looking for. So we're back. All right, we're at 25 minutes. All right. So this is the GOES magnometer. Geo. <laughs> Lovely Geo magnetometer maiden. Okay. Where would I be without you? All right. So this is from NOAA. SWSP. 
All right, that's for the other one. All right. So swpc.noaa.gov slash product slash goes hyphen magnometer. Okay, that's a website up here. The web address up here. Up here. I'm looking up here. That's up here. We're up here. Okay. All right. Okay. So these are nano Teslas on this side. Okay. NT. That's not new technology. Nano Teslas over here. All right. So you can see. You know, here, if you go over this, all right, this is a satellite, just so we know the satellite. Okay. All right, so here, it says, since, You all are wonderful. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you all being here and your time and your attention to learning more about the Schumer resonances with me. Um, all right. So, uh, as everybody says, since we're learning about the GEO's uh, satellite here, GOES system. All right. So, since 1975, each of NOAA's no geostationary operational environmental satellites. GOES, Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellites, GEOs, located in Earth's geographic equatorial plane, approximately 6.6 Earth radii from the center of the Earth have carried magnometers to monitor the geomagnetic field and its variation. Typically, there are two GEOs, uh, GOES, operational satellites, GOES East, located over the east coast of the U.S., and GOES West, located over the Pacific, just west of the U.S. mainland. At times, though, data are available from more than the two prime operational satellites. The geomagnetic field me measurements are important for... In, uh, uh, interpreting goes energetic particle measurements and for pro providing alerts to many cust uh, customers specifically for indicating the onset of a geomagnetic storm known as a sudden magnetic commencement goes magnometer data have been used for constructing magnetic field models and to help forecasters identify the buildup and release of energy in Earth's magnetosphere that occurs during geomagnetic storms and substorms. The magnetic field measurements can also indicate when the solar wind has pushed the boundary of the magnetosphere. The magnetopause inside of geosynchronous orbit these situations are usually during very disturbed space weather conditions and can be important for spacecraft operations. <clears throat> okay. Right. GOES magnometer data are also important to research, being among the most widely used spacecraft data by the National and International Solar and Space Weather Research Community. See also NASA, CDA web, usage statistics. The data have often been used to support launch decisions for research sounding rockets. The measurements can also be used to validate large-scale space environment models of the coupled magnetosphere and ionosphere. WPC will implement such a model in the near future. All right, okay. It's a lot. It's a lot. Impacts. Ah, okay. Good. Now it's there. I'm not going to read all this, but I am going to. HF Radio Communications. It sounds like fun. What's that say? Ah, new page. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Nice picture. All right. Ah, all right. Well, it's okay. Well, it says space weather this is interesting. Space weather, <clears throat> excuse me, impacts radio communication in a number of ways. At frequencies in the 1 to 30 megahertz range, known as high frequency or HF, 
The changes in ionospheric density and structure modify the transmission path and even <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. And even block transmission of HF radio signals completely. These frequencies are used by amateur ham radio operators and many industries such as commercial airlines. They are also used by a number of government agencies such as the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Department of Defense. There are several types of space weather that can impact HF radio HF radio communication in a typical sequence of space weather storms. The first impacts are felt during the solar flare itself. The solar X-rays X-rays from the sun penetrate to the bottom of the ionosphere to around 80 kilohertz, kilometers. There, the X-ray photons ionize the atmosphere and create an enhancement of the D layer of the atmosphere. The enhanced D layer reacts both as a reflector of radio waves at some frequencies and an absorber of waves at other frequencies. The radio blackout associated with solar flares occurs on the dayside region of the Earth and is most intense when the sun is directly overhead. Another type of space weather, the radiation storm caused by electric, uh, uh, energetic, I'm sorry, energetic solar protons can also disrupt HF radio communication. The proton, protons are guided by Earth's magnetic field such that they, that they collide with the upper atmosphere near the North and South Poles. The fast-moving protons have an effect similar to the X-ray photons and create an enhanced